Hello, my name is Andy Nitschka, and today I will be discussing how to model system behavior with sequence diagrams in System Composer. In the traffic control system shown here, our system engineer wants to describe the following scenario for their partially completed architecture. When the pedestrian presses the cross button, stop the traffic across the intersection and then indicate to the pedestrian that they can safely cross. Let's go ahead and add a sequence diagram that our engineer can use to specify their scenario. The first thing in their scenario was when the pedestrian presses the cross button. So let's go ahead and add a lifeline for one of the pedestrian subsystems. And then we can create a message between that root level sensor input and the sensor value port on the subsystem. We need to add a little bit more information in order to specify exactly when we expect this message to be triggered. In this case, when the pedestrian presses the button, that sensor value will rise from 0 to 1. So we can specify this by saying rising sensor value minus 1. Next, the pedestrian subsystem needs to send some sort of message to the controller of the intersection to let it know that the pedestrian would like to cross. The intersection subsystem and its controller doesn't exist yet, but we can still add them as lifelines, which will do co-creation of the necessary components. Once we've added these lifelines, we can add the necessary message. In this case, the message being sent isn't a signal value, it's actually using message semantics. So we just need to specify the name of the message being sent. We want to make sure that the lamp on the pedestrian subsystem is in the right state. So the controller will send a message back to the lamp command on the pedestrian subsystem to change its color to red. We can add an initial constraint on this lamp command to specify that the message being sent is to change the lamp command to a color of red. Next, we need to actually stop the traffic for both of the traffic subsystems. To start, let's send a message to the commands port on the traffic subsystem 1. And then in order to specify that this message should be telling the system to stop, we can specify that this message should go to the commands.stop interface. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing for the second traffic subsystem. We need to notify the controller when both of these traffic subsystems have stopped. To start with, let's send a new message from the stop port on the traffic subsystem 1 to a new TS1 response port on the controller. After we've created this message, we can specify that we're expecting the TS1 response port to rise from a value of 0 to 1. And then we can go ahead and we can do the same thing with the traffic subsystem 2 stop port sending a message to the TS2 response port. Finally, once the controller has been notified that both of these traffic subsystems have stopped, it can send a message back to the pedestrian subsystem for it to turn its lamp green. Let's switch back to the system composer for a moment. Notice that the intersection subsystem and the controller inside of it have automatically been created for us based on the lifelines we created inside the sequence diagram. In addition, ports and connections have also automatically been created based on the messages that were specified inside the sequence diagram. This is the co-creation that I mentioned earlier in the video. Let's switch back to our sequence diagram. Our engineer has a few problems with the scenario that they've specified here. Our first problem is that the controller doesn't need to send a message back to the traffic subsystems if it's already stopped. We can fix this problem by adding an opt fragment around both the message between the controller and the traffic subsystem requesting it to stop and the resulting stop message back to the controller. Now let's add a condition to this fragment specifying that we expect these messages to be sent whenever the traffic subsystem isn't currently stopped. We can do this by specifying that the TS1 response port on the controller should be less than 1. Now we can repeat this process of adding an op fragment for the second traffic subsystem, this time specifying in the condition that the TS2 response port on the controller should be less than 1. The second problem with this scenario is we specify the exact order we expect these stop messages to occur in. In reality, the stop message to the second traffic subsystem could happen before the stop message to the first traffic subsystem, or they could even happen at the same time. We can fix this issue 
by moving both stop messages into separate operands of a PAR fragment. With this sequence diagram, our engineer has captured the expected interaction between all of the components in their system for this scenario. They can now convert the intersection controller to a state flow behavior and use the sequence diagram as guidance during implementation. With sequence diagrams, you too can precisely capture the interaction between the components in your systems. Thank you for watching.